Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss one of our closest neighbors in terms of stars. Because here we have a significant development coming from the Alpha Centauri system, the closest star system to us. But specifically we're going to be focusing on one of the most recent James Webb Space Telescope observations that seems to have discovered a giant exoplanet that scientists speculated could exist a few years back. And so in this video we're going to focus on exactly what was discovered, the rigorous scientific process that led to this discovery, and of course the challenges when it comes to its confirmations. But first let's talk about the star system itself, because by itself this is a somewhat unusual triple system. The system that's only four and a half light years away from planet Earth. And here we have two main components known as Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which are actually very similar to the Sun, both in mass and luminosity and a third component known as Proxima Centauri that's classified as a red dwarf. And here's what the two main stars look like side by side. Now the left star that's also been renamed as Rigel Centaurus is approximately 10% more massive than the Sun, but is also about 50% brighter. Whereas the right star, with the proper name Toliman, is about 90% the mass of the Sun and about half the luminosity. And they generally orbit around one another every 79 years. But they also contain this very exciting red dwarf partner known as Proxima Centauri, also referred to as Alpha Centauri C. A star around which a few years back researchers confirmed an exciting terrestrial planet in what seems to be habitable zone. You can learn about this in one of the videos in the description. And this entire system also seems to be just a little bit older than the solar system. Here the age is about 5.3 billion years old. But because two stars here are so similar to the Sun, both in terms of mass, age and even composition, for many years this entire system stood out as an exceptionally promising target for exoplanetary research and specifically for direct imaging. Basically seeing the planets directly just because the star system was so close to us. And in this case, if there was some kind of a planet in the habitable zone, it would be at a distance of 1.27 astronomical units away from the binary system. And in terms of angular separation when it comes to the observations from a telescope, this would be only about 0.95 arc seconds, which is definitely resolvable by modern ground and space-based telescopes. Yet, despite its appeal and despite all of these exciting propositions, for years and years and even decades and decades, no planets have been officially confirmed around either Alpha Centauri A or B, despite several claims that maybe there was something in orbit. With previous efforts including observations from all of the major telescopes, including the Hubble Space Telescope and the ESO's Very Large Telescope, that tried to find something by observing the system for a long time. But there was actually one potential detection back in 2019. Here there was a candidate, designated C1, and it was surprisingly at a separation of just 1.1 AU, which is not so far from that habitable zone. But it could have been a planet, or maybe just some dust. So back in 2019 and for a few years afterwards this was not confirmed. But since then a few more telescopes became active with much better instruments and of course much much better capabilities. With the James Webb opening new avenues for directly imaging exoplanets and observing dust disks, particularly around stars like this. And to observe a lot of these stars, James Webb has one superpower. It has what's known as a coronagraphic imaging mode by using its MIRI instrument. This is where the star itself is blocked in order to prevent too much starlight. And for this particular study researchers chose 15.5 micrometer observations due to favorable star planet contrast ratios for planets with temperatures around 200 to 350 Kelvin. But despite of this there was still obviously challenges. The biggest one is of course the extreme brightness. Alpha Centauri A is way too bright for direct target acquisition. And so here researchers would have to create what's known as a blind offset to prevent light oversaturation. And the second problem is that this is a binary system. So basically the binary companion will also produce contamination. Both stars are very bright and so even by blocking one star there is still a lot of contamination from the second star. With the full intensity from the star illuminating the MIRI detector so much that it would essentially require very complex data analysis in order to resolve anything. Here's one of the examples of how these stars looked when observed through the coronographer of JWST. Not to mention that the stars also move relatively fast across the night skies, meaning that the telescope would have to track them very accurately in order to avoid any more contamination. And so to avoid some of these challenges, 
Researchers behind this study created a very thorough strategy. And one of the strategies here was to use a distant reference star, in this case Epsilon Musca, which allowed the scientists to create an accurate reference image for the analysis of the data and for post-processing. And so once the strategy was developed, scientists behind the studies you can find in the description observed the stars in three different time frames. August 2024, February 2025, and April 2025. And by having these three very accurate images, researchers now had a chance to potentially discover something. And to everyone's surprise, this comprehensive search revealed a single point-like source. Here it's designated S1. This was detected at a distance of about two astronomical units away from Alpha Centauri A, or at the angular separation of 1.5 arc seconds. But because this was observed in the infrared emissions, here it became possible to find out what sort of an object we're looking at, because this was also emitting infrared light. We'll talk about exactly what this means in a few seconds. Because crucially, this object was not redetected in some of the follow-ups in February and April of 2025. And it's this non-detection that's actually crucial in understanding the nature of S1 and in the follow-up analysis. Because here researchers first had to determine if this was an artifact or an actual object. And for this they had to perform a lot of rigorous tests. As a matter of fact they have a second study dedicated specifically for that. With the overall conclusion after pages and pages of data showing that S1 is very likely not a detector level artifact. They actually compared this to some of the residual artifacts from Alpha Centauri B and it was not the same. Now one assumption here was that this was some kind of a stationary object somewhere in the distance far far away, or basically this was a stationary object, and the evidence for this not being the case came from the observations later on in February and April of 2025. Because during this time the system has moved quite a lot, roughly around 3.7 arc seconds, this object would have been in a different location, but it was not seen anywhere. Alternatively, what if this was a fast moving object in front of the star? So basically something maybe in a solar system. And this was also unlikely because during the two and a half hour observations, there seemed to be absolutely no change in its position, ruling out high proper motion, such as some kind of an asteroid or some kind of a planet in a solar system. Like for example the hypothetical planet 9. In this case we usually assume these objects to have a velocity of at least 10 arc seconds per hour, so this object would have shifted quite a lot. Additionally, the analysis of the catalog known as the Minor Planet Catalog revealed no such objects anywhere in this exact position. And based on these comprehensive tests, the main hypothesis here was that this was possibly a physical planet. A planet around Alpha Centauri A. But still just a candidate for now. And so here I guess let's discuss these non-detections from February and April of 2025. Because this is technically a critical piece of this entire puzzle. If S1 is indeed an astrophysical object orbiting Alpha Centauri A, its non-detection later on is extremely likely due to its orbital motion. And so here the explanation is that sometimes this year it moved into the region of poor sensitivity, such as possibly within the chronographer's inner angle, where it usually masks anything in order to avoid contamination. But in order to constrain its orbit, researchers also made one crucial assumption. What if this is the same object as C1 discovered back in 2019? And so by fitting the combined astrometry of S1 and C1, and incorporating these two non-detections, here they were able to create potential orbits that this object might contain. With the analysis revealing approximately 52% chance that this is a planet, and C1 and S1 are essentially the same object. And this is actually a very high probability, but also highlights the difficulties of confirming these short period planets through direct imaging. Mostly because the stars are just way too bright, and the techniques needed to discover them are super complex. And so if it is real, and if it's here, here is what we kind of know about it. First of all, its orbit is probably anywhere from 2 to 3 years long, and possibly somewhat eccentric. It could be actually up to about 0.4 eccentricity, making the orbit relatively oval shaped. It also potentially has a somewhat inclined orbit relative to the orbital plane, with an inclination up to about 50 degrees. And surprisingly, this sort of fits a lot of predictions in regards to certain gravitational mechanisms. For example, something known as von Zeipel Kozai-Luidov oscillation. A bizarre gravitational effect affecting triple systems, where very distant companions, such as Alpha Centauri B, 
can drive unusual periodic oscillations between the inner orbit eccentricity and inclination. And so the existence of a planet with high eccentricity and high inclination could indeed be the result of the partner dramatically shifting the orbit over time. And by the way, this even happens here in the solar system, because we've actually found certain asteroids and certain minor planets with extremely inclined orbits that would be difficult to explain otherwise. But more importantly, similar orbits have been predicted by other studies, and they're believed to be relatively stable. And so in terms of gravitational stability, this planet is definitely possible. But if it does exist, what kind of a planet is this? Well, here right now we can only estimate its physical characteristics just based on that one image from JWST. For example, when it comes to temperature, its effective temperature is very likely set by the heating from Alpha Centauri A, but not its partner. Also, since this planet was not seen in February and April of 2025, it means that it's not too hot. And so its mean temperature is expected to be maybe about 225 Kelvin or minus 48 Celsius, minus 55 Fahrenheit. So maybe a little bit on the chilly side. Here the researchers compare it to a slightly warmer version of Saturn. And in terms of radius and mass, based on the flux observations from the James Webb and based on various atmospheric models, right now we can only speculate that this is maybe Jupiter-like in size, possibly even just a little bit larger than Jupiter, with a mass of maybe about 90 to 150 Earth masses, so once again kind of similar to Saturn. Which by itself would not really be unusual, especially because we do expect such planets to exist around sun-like stars. But an alternative explanation also proposes that maybe this is some kind of a circumplanetary ring system. Or basically a ring with cross-sectional area equivalent to half of Saturn's rings may create somewhat similar infrared emissions. And so here a planet similar to Jupiter, with rings half the size of Saturn, could potentially produce something very similar. Although in this case, the temperature of the ring would vary dramatically depending on where the planet is located. It seemed to be hotter during the C1 detection in 2019, and it seems to be much colder during the detection in 2024. And so in short, right now we don't really know what this is, but it seems to be something. And if this is a gas giant, it would obviously have significant implications for our understanding of planetary formation in binary systems. And so while planetary formation can be suppressed when there are two stars, previous models have suggested a kind of an island of stability where planets could form and can exist for billions of years. And so the observations of this eccentric and inclined orbit in this system seems to provide direct evidence for this hypothesis. At the same time, the presence of this planet could also affect the prospects of other planets in the system. Because here various numerical simulations indicate that there are certain regions, specifically approximately 0.4 AU from Alpha Centauri, that would actually be inhospitable to any other planets due to dynamical instabilities. And that of course suggests that it's unlikely that there might be other planets exterior to the Alpha Centauri's habitable zone and planets that do exist could only exist much, much closer. But obviously, once again, this is all, at least for now, a bit of a speculation. And so the next step is of course going to be observations once again, in order to see if we can redetect this object, confirming its existence. And based on the assumption that S1 detection and C1 detection are the same object, and of course based on the assumption that scientists behind this paper predicted its orbit relatively accurately, we're going to have a perfect opportunity to see it again in August of 2026. This is a time when the study predicts the separation to be the greatest, exceeding one arc second, thus making the planet super visible and super clear with additional telescopes such as the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope potentially helping us detect it even better. But since a lot of the advanced telescopes are not ready for this yet, for now at least these observations will have to be conducted with a James Webb, with one of the future observations possibly involving direct mass measurements. This would be done by looking at radial velocity and by using telescopes like ALMA in order to find something in orbit. And so if it's confirmed, it's going to be one of the most exciting planets discovered in the last few years. The nearest, the oldest, and possibly the coldest object directly imaged from the solar system. And because it's so close and because it's so cold, it would also make this the perfect object to study planetary atmospheres, providing a direct comparison to Saturn and Jupiter in the solar system. But at least for now, it's still going to remain a candidate. And so only follow-up observations will tell us what this is for sure. And so until future studies or until we discover something else, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. You can find all of the links and all of the studies in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
Support the show on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.